presenters Vashali Jha and Siddhartha Shipi from San Jose State University and their uh, presentation topic is going to be machine learning to develop models for analyzing stress in an academic environment. I think we all need that, right? <laughs> As we are nearing to the end of the semester now. So our project is, as uh, for said, uh, machine learning to develop a model to analyze uh, to analyze stress in a academic environment. My name is Siddharth Shubhi. I'm Vishali. Um, so stress in the academic environment, as you already know, it could cause ill health, anxiety, depression. And it could be to poor academic performance, dropout rates, health implications, poor sleep, and substance abuse. So some recent studies that have been conducted are at dental undergraduates where they experience moderate levels of stress and the gender and stress level was negatively correlated with academic performance. And the second study was conducted in New York where it involved the participants to provide saliva samples, blood samples, and they also measured the cortisol and DHEAS levels of each resident. So our objectives is to use a machine learning model that would predict the student's academic performance as a function of the variables, gender, stress level, and cognitive performance. We used IBM Watson to train the model for this analysis, and we analyzed and discussed the final outcome with results. So our data was collected from a university in Punjab, Pakistan, and it was based on the responses of 298 undergraduate students of the computer science department. Um, some included variables were age, gender, cognitive performance, number of absentees, and PSS score. So in our questionnaire, we had a survey and it involved three sections. So the first one was perceived stress scale, where it asked them about like their thoughts, feelings, and anything about their day. Um, it was combined into three categories, low stress, moderate stress, and high perceived stress. The second section was cognitive performance, where it involved uh, factors that could affect their um, thinking abilities, which would be forgetfulness, distractibility, and false triggering. And then the third section was just demographics. So our methodology to run the machine learning model on IBM Watson. So first, you'd have to collect a specially formatted data and then uh, run it through the program and it should complete uh, with an ROC curve, statistical summary, feature summary, and confusion matrix. So in our analysis of the data, our highest standard deviation was cognitive performance and the lowest was gender. Um, so some algorithms that were used in the current machine learning analysis. So the first one was LGBM classifier where um, where it discluded data with smaller gradients. And some advantages were that it included better accuracy and was com more compatible than other data sets. And uh, disadvantages was that it could potentially overfit smaller data sets. And then we um, made a table for the other three as well, which was snap boosting machine classifier, random forest classifier, and snap random forest classifier. So some algorithm enhancement strategies were that the, uh, the first one was hyperparameter optimization, which helps determine how models are structured, creating an, an ideal improvement for accuracy. The second one was feature engineering, where it, it is the process of manipulating data into different features. And the third one's HPO2, which is uh, used to enhance the algorithm. So there were two cases that we um, run our program in. Uh, the first one was manual without manual optimization and the second one was optimization of the data set. So we selected the variable average grade COD. So here we have a progress map. Case one is our first run of um, our first trial run you could say of uh, analyzing stress and here there's like a kind of depiction of the process in which this model was trained. So obviously with um, any kind of model, you need to train with data. And uh, this start off by reading uh, the data set in this uh, CSV format, uh, processing that, and after that we can choose a model, right? So uh, for our first uh, iteration, we chose Snap Random Forest Classifier and uh, Random Forest Classifier, each with their own uh, individual pipelines. 
And uh, of course, there were uh, some optimizations as mentioned previously. So uh, when we ran the model, we obtained uh, an accuracy of around 61.4% for the snap random forest uh, classifier. And this was given all what uh, not enhancements which were applied, such as the feature engineering, HPO1 and HPO2. And uh, we concluded that the variables which were most impactful or most influential were uh, cognitive performance, number of absentees, and gender. So um, cognitive performance was the highest one, uh, giving it 94% uh, influence in the entire model. So here's the uh, confusion matrix. Uh, if you don't know, confusion matrix uh, in a uh, general sort of uh, aspect is it's like a cr uh, cross kind of display against it like graphs against observed and uh, predicted values. And this kind of uh, reflects the training sort of aspect. Or, I mean, the testing sort of aspect, of course. And uh, here you can, of course, see the individual accuracies of the different values, which we generalize from zero to two for the uh, average grade. And model evaluation measure is, it's basically a table with uh, three different categories, obviously measures, holdout scores, and cross-validations. I'll go over holdout scores and cross-validations in greater detail uh, soon, but essentially for each of these different measures, uh, holdout scores is like an initial assessment of these values and cross-validation is a more, um, it's a, a build-up on that. And you can see that, well, for, uh, for example, the accuracy uh, was observed around like a 60%. So it, it's not so great. Um, and you can see we also have other hidden values. And here is an ROC curve. So an ROC curve is a graphical interpretation of our data, it graphs the true positive rate against the false positive rate, and uh, it creates these multiple different curves, and uh, they're color coded with values from zero to two because these are like, as I mentioned before, the uh, PSS score values are broken down from low levels of stress, medium, and high levels of stress, and they're uh, labeled accordingly. And in general, the closer a curve is to the top left corner, the more accurate it is. And you can see our curves aren't necessarily in this sort of area where we would like it to be. And um, we can, of course, infer that there are lower accuracies. And this is kind of primarily due to the following reasons. Uh, first, the data set size is way too small with like only 298 students actually doing the sur uh, survey. Um, we can't necessarily make a very conclusive model on this. And also human error because um, first, filling out the survey, of course, there are some um, issues and aspects of collecting data that way. And also translating that into something the computer can actually understand. So of course, we had to improve this. And this is where we shift from case one to case two. And uh, first of all, we start off with interpolation and extrapolation, really just trying to patch up some of these human errors uh, where they're like very abundant and filling in some uh, missing data. And then we codified the cognitive assessment scale. Initially it was like from one to 100. Uh, and we simplified this to one to 10. And we removed a column mother's occupation, seeing as uh, statistically it was the least influential. So now we will delve into case two. And here you can see a very familiar, similar graph. This is again, the same process to create the model. However, um, there were two uh, different algorithms cited. Uh, LGBM classifier, which is a light gradient boosting machine classifier, as well as snap boosting machine classifier. And the model accuracies, you could see jumped from the initially 60% to 71.4%. Uh, and here's just a breakdown of all the pipelines, but you can really see that this uh, change was quite significant. And here's the feature summary. So again, uh, you can see that the features also have uh, different varying ra uh, ratios of importance with a uh, number of absentees now, number of absentees now being the top value at 
and you can see cognitive performance is still pretty high at 86 percent so here the confusion matrix um, overall as a whole if you check the uh, bottom right co uh, corner we have uh, accurate uh, an accuracy value individually for each um, each value um, from zero to two and you can see overall as a whole these values have increased somewhat so there is uh, some clear uh, change for the model evaluation measure this change is also seen um, again the accuracy is just really increasing across and also other values accordingly here the ROC curve uh, the change isn't Although a 10% increase is quite significant, um, as a whole, uh, we can't really see that much of a difference in this kind of graphical interpretation. However, statistically, through whatever um, tables were created, we can still, uh, we know that there's still a change, although it um, could be much greater. Uh, and now we have a comparative study, because clearly we have these different feature summaries across so many models. Why not um, test it across everything as a whole? So we have uh, four primary models, right? And we took like the top performing pipelines of each one. And we found that cognitive performance, you can see across the board, is um, like one of the most important, ranging from 86 to 100%. You can see that other factors are not necessarily as uh, effective. For example, number of absentees ranging from six, which is very low, to 100 percent so now um i i think i mentioned across the board like holdout score cross validation score um but what really is that right so the holdout score uh initially when we are running this model right we need to split it into training and testing data ratio and uh, we use 90 10 as our ratio of training and testing data however um this is typically run once and that is what gives us this initial value. However, through cross-validation, this process occurs like multiple times. So since this is like randomly allocated, um, once this process cycles multiple times, we, uh, the model itself gets a better understanding of how um, to better create the model, right? And um, this is why we can see that values of cross-validation accuracies are significantly higher as opposed to initial holdout scores. So um, overall, um, we found that cognitive performance is basically the uh, primary key factor uh, in this ML model with overall a rate of 94% accuracy. And you can also see the uh, individual statistics, such as the minimum, maximum, whatnot. And um, the outcome of our model, we found that accuracy from case one to case two uh, there is clearly a large increase from the initial 65.5% to 79.3, cross-validation being more of like an average in this case. And um, although uh, the increase was somewhat uh, significant, it could have been improved much more. And so essentially for future work, we plan on collecting much more data because um, 298 is not enough. Um, yeah, we also found that other uh, features did have some other significance, but that is essentially our presentation. Yeah, so for the cognitive performance, uh, I think we mentioned before there was a questionnaire. And um, essentially, like, we had, like, although we broke it down into three sections, right, in the presentation, um, the questions were, like, more varied across. But, for example, a question might ask, like, what were your test scores across, like, you know, last three test scores, for example, right? And there were, like, other questions. Uh, essentially, just trying to gauge kind of a better understanding of person's cognitive performance. Of course, it's not exactly something which can be Do you quite think students who are answering the overestimate or underestimate like do you think that is or how well they're well Yeah, so obviously if I was asked that question I would
kind of changed a little bit. Uh, however, um, that I did address that before. There was human error, right? Um, it is a problem, however, I think with enough data, you know, there are like, uh, we can find some sort of common trend. That's the main goal. Also, can you walk me through what exactly you did for the uh, for the feature engineering, uh, we ran the model through IBM, so primarily it applied these optimizations uh, in and of itself. Did it tell you what it did? It, um, it was more of like a built-in sort okay. of, yeah. Any other questions? Thank you.